Supercross Live on supercrossonline.com. Kevin Barnett and Jim Holly on a snowy morning here in St. Louis. It's a little nasty outside, but it's beautiful inside this dome, Jim. And we continue to have some fantastic racing action. That 450 class course, James Stewart, last week checks out with a first win. First win in almost a year on the calendar. But the story continues to be Davey Millsaps, our points leader, up by 22. Yeah, I mean, that 22 points, that's going to be hard for Villapoto to catch him. And, you know, if they finish, you know, as long as Davey's finishing on the podium, you know, Villapoto, say, for instance, they do the same thing they did this week, that's only two points. And you got 20 going into Daytona. I mean, it, it's hard to make up those points, but there's still a lot of racing. But I kind of see a trend growing here. I mean, you got to go back to Arlington when Villapoto won. He whole shot and led all 20 yeah. laps. Last weekend, James Stewart, whole shots, leads all 20 laps. But I think here tonight in St. Louis, I, I think the track uh, lends itself to a, a passing track. You know, you're not going to have to go in there and force the issue on passes. And what I'm talking about is going back to Arlington where Dungey, uh, you know, passed Chad Reed. Right. You don't have to go in there and move him. I, I, I like the soil here. and It's always a good place and it always uh, lends itself to great racing. Yeah, it's not only the soil that everyone likes, but also track construction has been an issue this year. What elements do you want in a track if you're looking to have multiple racing lines and passing? Well, I mean, you know, it's it's one of those things where you want some long straightaway. So if you got some horsepower, you can get underneath the guy and make a pass. But it, it's the ones that are tight and short, you know, where you, you, it's just kind of one line. You follow the guys, and I, you know, I, I think tonight here uh, the whoops look really good here. They got a sand section. They got that big wall jump coming off to the uh, backwards onto the straightaway, uh, you know, for the starting line. I, I think that, you know, just some passing lanes, some opportunities to get in there and make some passes on some guys. Some nice big uh, tall uh, bowl turns are nice so you can go up there and square it off and get underneath a guy um, just things like that all right you mentioned the fact that we have had whole shot winners and a whole shot winner last week for the first time in his career I had a hard time believing that was Will Hahn whole shot win for the victory and he finds himself just two points behind Dean Wilson 250 East we know there's four legitimate riders yeah, I, I mean, I think that, you know, uh, you know, I'm still waiting for Blake Warden to kind of get up there and get in the mix. Uh, you know, a couple of the other guys, you know, a couple of those rookies to get in there. But, I mean, it was a great win for Will Hahn. The guy's been trying, you know, his whole career to get one. And like you said, he finally gets one last weekend. And, uh, you know, maybe Wilson, uh, you know, just kind of waited back and thought, well, maybe he's going to make a mistake. Maybe he's going to buckle under the pressure. But Will Hahn didn't buckle. And, you know what, you, you got to keep him as a threat if you're Dean Wilson. you got to say, i got to start beating this guy because if Hahn wins the Another one tonight, he's going to have the point lead going into Daytona. Now, Marvin Muskin, he sits currently in fourth in points, but he's been fast in practice. It just seems like he can't put together a main. Well, and it all starts with that start. I mean, uh, you know, Marvin, uh, we've seen Kenny Roxon out west uh, getting great starts and putting himself in good position to win races. And and uh, him and Eli Tomac have, have kind of dominated that west coast. But Marvin's got to get a start here in St. Louis. All right, St. Louis all day. We'll have coverage, of course, of practice, three hours of live streaming. And then this is a CBS weekend. So 12 p.m. Eastern time uh, tomorrow. On Sunday, you'll be able to watch the race and then the lights later in the day. So look forward to more Supercross Live. We'll have rider interviews on the track walk as well as that three hours of live streaming and then the Amsoil podium interviews with Jim at the end of the day. Going to be another great day of racing here in St. Louis.